Hey kids, it's me, Kevin Smith. Almost 30 years ago, I made my first movie, Clerks. But I've grown as a filmmaker since then, man. That's why I just finished Clerks 3, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, Clerks 3 is done, and I'm taking it right to your hometown, man. Join me for Clerks 3, colon, The Convenience Tour. Come watch Clerks 3 with me, and then afterwards, we'll Q&A about it, man. The tour starts September 4th at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey, right by Jane Silent Bob Secret Stash. Goes up one coast, down the other. Clerks 3, The Convenience Tour, man. You are supposed to be there today with me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a bonus episode of Fun Bearable. My name is Chuck Staten. I'm Brad Rohr. I'm Ray Harrington. Uh, we're going to try to be putting up bonus episodes here and there from our past. We both, all three of us, have a, a lot of podcasting in our past, a lot of video projects. And one of the very fun things we do is Brad and I have moderated at a lot of Comic-Cons over the years. That's yeah. true. So one of the things we got to do at Rhode Island Comic-Con 2021 was moderate a clerk's panel. And now that Clerks 3 is being released, uh, we thought that it would be really fun to repost that Clerks panel. I'm living on borrowed time. I'm gonna make a movie! Everything in the script is something someone I know said. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Take off your pants. That's how we did it in the 90s, son! Clerks 3, in movie theaters two nights only, September 13th and 15th. So that day, uh, we had a big, big, big cast on the stage, Brad. Can you tell me exactly who was there? We had Brian O'Halloran. We had Jeff Anderson, Marilyn Gigliotti, Scott Schiaffo, mm -hmm. Trevor Fairman, mm -hmm. Kevin Wiseman. Great time. Representatives from Clerks and Clerks 2. That's correct. And uh, yeah, we had a great time. That was a very crazy weekend. Kevin was 45 minutes late to his panel, so the Rhode Island Comic Con organizers asked us to go up and riff on stage for the audience for that Ooh. long. <laughs> but I'll say this, cool little shout out. Uh, I went to a poker tournament recently at Smod Castle right. in uh, Leonardo, New Jersey, which is in the same building as the Quick Stop, and there was a guy there, and he said, hey man, did I see you at Rhode Island Comic Con? I was like, oh yeah, we moderated the clerks panel. He goes, didn't you fill in for Kevin with your buddy, Brad? And I was like, yeah, I did. He goes, you guys were hilarious. I don't know if that stuff was written ahead of time, but it was so funny. And I was like, wow. I'm like, are you from Rhode Island? He goes, I'm from Austin, Texas. I only came up for the clerk's reunion panel. And I was wow. like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And that guy vanished into the ether. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that guy, Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> Why that, would you think that? <laughs> and that guy... Well, folks, it was me. <laughs> well, folks, well, that, folks, that's a story for another day. <laughs> How I became that man is a story for another day. I am so confused. <laughs> you should be lasso. Ah! This originally aired as an episode of the Chuck and Brad podcast, yep. but we're re-airing here as a bonus. Uh, hopefully there's a lot of stuff like this, but please enjoy uh, the Clerks Reunion panel hosted by Brad and myself from Rhode Island Comic Con 2021. How many people by applause were at Kevin Smith's panel last night? Was that amazing or what? Oh my God. Uh, anyone come to Muse's panel? Just last, all right, yeah. All right, well, you are the diehard uh, Clerks fans and guess who we have back there? We got everybody else. So I'm gonna bring up your moderators. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were at Kevin's uh, panel, you saw these guys up here for about a half an hour beforehand. Let's hear it from my friends from the Chuck and Brad podcast. Chuck and Brad. Thank you, Rhode Island Comic Con. We are very excited to be here with all y'all for this clerks panel. Are you excited? Who was here last night for Kevin's panel? Okay, so that many people already don't like us. Sorry yes, about that. Yes, that many people had to sit through 40 minutes of our nonsense last night. Uh, we are excited. We're going to get right to the, to, to the clerks here. Uh, we're going to ask some questions to prime the pump, and then uh, we'll turn it over to uh, you. So start your brain boxes working and uh, get those questions ready. So 
Without, that was a prime the pump is a gross metaphor. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, keep going. Uh, without wait, what a great segue. Let's bring out uh, our folks from Clerks, our friends from Clerks. Please put your Rhode Island paws together for the Clerks. We have Brian O'Halloran. We have Jeff Anderson. Perfect. <laughs> Marilyn Gigliotti. <laughs> Scott Schiaffo. <laughs> Trevor Furman. Yeah. And finally, Kevin Wiseman. Keep on clapping. I have questions written down. Welcome, everybody. How you guys doing? Doing good. Thanks good. for having us. Very good. By the way, uh, this is uh, Trevor Furman's first convention ever. Woohoo! Woohoo! So, y'all are totally, this is a gross fucking 90s thing to say, but y'all are popping his cherry. <laughs> I thought I popped his cherry. Well, that, that, that was in your trailer, and that's for the behind-the-scenes DVD. Are you guys having a good experience at Rhode Island Comic Con? This is my first time here in Rhode Island, and I'm excited to be here and meet you all. Yeah! I mean, as you know, I've done this show like six years, and uh, I've been pitching this fucking get-together for like all those times, and finally, Steve and the group finally like, okay... <laughs> and finally decided to bring us in uh, like this. And plus, this was the year just before COVID that Jeff said, all right, I'll come down off my mountain and uh, <laughs> ming mingle amongst you mortals. Uh, and he's here. But uh, what a way to do it. Um, not only bringing us in, but bringing Kevin in and having the movies pop up and the, mm -hmm. the movie swag downstairs. It's, yeah. uh, it's full on, you know, pre publicity for the Clerks 3, hopefully in June next year, comes out. And, uh, Woo! Yeah, give it up! Wow! You guys here in the Rhode Island Providence and also the surrounding New England, Boston, and even guys coming up from Maryland, stuff like, you guys have been supportive of the films all these years, so it deserves that this would be the show that we get everybody together for. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Thank you very much, man. And, uh, since Kevin's not here today... We've collectively decided we're going to tell you about Clerks 3. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Jay and Silent Bob get married. <laughs> it's a scoop. You've been scooped. Elias is the minister. <laughs> now that's a subtitle. I like that. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's kick off some questions here. Uh, Clerks 1, folks, when you auditioned for this little indie movie in, in, you know, let's call it 1993, was there even one brain cell that was like, you know what, 28 years from now, I'm gonna be at Rhode Island Comic Con, and, <laughs> and so many people are gonna be here to see me. Scott? Wow, the uh, Comic Con culture, or the, the whole phenomenon of what Comic Con has become over the last 20 years, really wasn't happening back then no. at all. Uh, in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, I had attended some with uh, friends of mine who were vendors, and it was comics, yeah. and comic books mostly, and comic book artists. And uh, so, no, I, I had no clue of any of that. I just was uh, hoping to get myself uh, noticed as a character actor. Yeah. And back then, uh, no cell phone, no internet, so actors would follow the trade papers to find audition notices, and Kevin put an audition notice in my local paper, luckily, because I was an hour and a half away. I wasn't anywhere near uh, those guys down the shore. I'm way up north in New Jersey. So I'm just happy I saw the audition notice and got down, did my monologue, and they called me back very thankfully. And, but no, could never have seen any, any of this coming at all. I mean, I'm holding Julie's gum. I'm holding... You are such a pan you such a panderer. <laughs> Hold on, I got gum too. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid I was going to put somebody's eye out. 
Um, for me, you know, I used it as another platform because I had been doing community theater with Brian. Right. And uh, I would not have thought that it's like, you know, it would be so well received or anything like that. Right. I didn't even know about comic conventions. Um, and I moved out to California in 97. And it wasn't probably until like early 2000s, I'm not even quite sure, that somebody contacted me about doing conventions. And since I hadn't heard about it, I thought, I was like, oh, somebody's trying to scam me. Right, um, right of course. And uh, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, people will pay for your autographs. I'm like, get out. <laughs> um, and he listed a, a few celebrities, and I'm like, great. I actually happen to know a few of those, Jason and Jeremy London. So I immediately contacted them. And they told me, oh, yeah. It's like, this is, this is a whole thing. And this is like a beginning of emails and computers and stuff. Um, so once he told me about that, I was like, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool, actually. Um, and I, I, I say to a lot of you that, that come up, and I'm like, had I known about conventions like this, I would have been attending, you oh, know, yeah. before. Because this is my thing. This is my jam. I like it. Um, I'm, I'm not the uber uber like fan in that sense that knows all the terms and all that kind of stuff but i mean definitely something that i i, I would definitely have gone to nice <laughs> nice that's awesome what's an audition <laughs> perfect <laughs> no uh i actually went to the the um, the auditions with a friend of mine who was supposed to play dante and he was terrible. And I wound up making fun of him. I was like, dude, you're the worst actor I've ever seen. And he was like, well, don't, why don't you audition? So I said to Kevin, I was like, uh, my friend wants me to audition. Who should I be? And he said, you know, I, I wrote this part for Jay, Jay Muse, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it. So you'll be my backup Jay. I was like, all right. And uh, so I auditioned as Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a whole new movie. <laughs> Noinge. <laughs> I was like, Kevin, what is this? Mooch? You're like, no, nooch. So I need you to say, I'll suck this bitch, I'll suck this bitch, I'll suck anything that moves. <laughs> that was actually the audition. I know, scene. I know. And anybody, anybody who has the Clerks 10 DVD, the, the auditions are on the extra DVD outtakes and stuff. So if you want to see what not to do in auditions, uh, it's a great teachable moment, that, that thing. Uh, yeah, when I auditioned, uh, first of all, I auditioned uh, on the second day because I forgot about the auditions entirely. Um, but thankfully, the owner of the First Avenue Playhouse in First Avenue in uh, Atlantic Highlands called me the following Monday morning going, where were you? I thought you were going to come to this audition. I'm like, holy shit, was that last night? And I auditioned, and I went in there, and they said, I said, how many principals are there? He's like, there's six, but their cast were just auditioning day players. I was like, okay. And I went in there with this monologue, from a play called Wait Until Dark, and it's a very evil monologue. It's a play that me and Marilyn did together. And I made a dialogue, mished it together into a monologue, and did it. And he was like, oh, shit, man, I, I wish I had a villain. You'd be perfect in this movie as the villain. But uh, oh, all right. Called me back a couple of days later. I came back for a reading just with Kevin to read a callback to read the independent contractor scene. And then I loved what was there. And he's like, what do you think? I'm like, it's hilarious. Like, the other guy is really funny, but you know, the, the dialogue together is funny. He's like, do you want to do it? I was like, sure. Now, I didn't know what the film was about, didn't know who these guys were. I thought I was a day player of these two convenience store clerks in this movie that the main movie comes in and then the two main characters leave <laughs> overhearing this bullshit conversation about Star Wars. And I thought that was it. He goes, no, no, no. The movie is called Clerks and you would be one of the main clerks. And I was like, I was told by the guy videotaping the auditions that the principals were all cast. He was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> And there you have it. So when you say, like, did you ever think back then auditioning, we'd be here talking at a Comic-Con. Uh, like Scott said, Comic-Cons were all about comics back then, right, right, not, right. not media guests um, who busted down the door and be like, fuck y'all, we're stealing all your comic book money now. Um, <laughs> but here I am stealing all your comic book money and drinking a fucking, I assure you, we're open beer. So. Right. <laughs> That's amazing. The, Excellent. The highlight of that comment is I'm drinking a beer. So here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I have a question that I think uh, you guys might have varied answers on. 
Do you feel like when you meet people who are fans of Clerks, that they expect you to be just like your characters? Does that happen? Kevin? Let's start with Kevin on that yeah. one. Do you get a lot of people going up there defending your love of Lord of the Rings? It's, it's crazy to me that, um, you know, I was in the second Clerks. I'm not sure if you remember. But, um, <laughs> you know, I worked w one day on that, on that film, and there are things you do in your career where you could have potentially worked for a year on something, and you think, this is going to be them getting the gold for the, the awards are going to... Nobody sees it. And um, some things you do... Obviously, I knew Kevin, and I had seen the first one, which was great. But there are some things you do that really land with the audience and with the public, and this is certainly one of those. But there's always a certain... A Clerks fan is a certain type of person. And I mean that with love. There's a, there's, <laughs> there's a certain energy. Easy, easy. All right. No, no. I mean, I'll know when someone's approaching me, I can kind of gauge, okay, this is, there's going to be some sort of Lord of the Rings question coming. I feel it. And uh, I'm generally, generally right. Um, and even today, out here meeting everyone, everyone's been great. Like, you guys know the dialogue better than I do. And I'm having a hard time even remembering that day. I do we, remember. We were pretty drunk. We were pretty drunk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. But I do remember. I do remember a mixture of oatmeal and pea soup for. Yeah, that's right. That was your barf. That was my barf. Yeah, and uh, but but yes, uh, it, it's it's crazy to me the 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 uh, the detail uh, that the the fans can can conjure at a moment's notice. So it's really nice meeting everyone, and it's been great meeting everyone today. And if I haven't met you, please say hello. Excellent. Trevor, what about you? I know this is your first con, but in your real world life, yeah. what has your been experience about people approaching about your experience on Clerks 2? Well, people assume that I'm a lot like that character, but in their defense, I, I am a lot like that character. All right. <laughs> Still a virgin. Uh... Love Jesus and the Transformers. <laughs> Fucked a donkey once. Um, <laughs> Twice. Yeah. I should have gotten, honestly, I should have gotten co-writing credits because I think Kevin sort of cribbed from my life heavily. Well, I remember when you were developing Elias's delivery and we were like a couple of days of doing read-through readings and rehearsals with Kevin before shooting Clerks 2 and you were, you were struggling or you were coming with these different angles of how to, to, to say this kind of dialogue, which anybody who reads Kevin's dialogue especially, it's very verbose. It's a lot of nomenclature that you go like, what? Where is he going with this? But you working through your process and us watching it was really interesting because there'd be some rehearsals where you'd leave, you'd, you'd go back home, and Kevin and Jeff and Scott, we'd all look at each other like, do, do we know where he's going? And we were like, I don't know where he's going, but... I, I'm kind of liking him finding this character. It's, it's weird because his, his speech canter and everything else is just so funny because you're used to people in Kevin's world being like, ba da 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 and you're like, bah, 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 bah. but he was just like, uh, listen. Um, you know, and it was really cool seeing that process, and it was great seeing, especially in Clerks 3, how you, you, you bring this to a nice head to it. Yeah, he, I think he started off a lot more... Um hostile and then gradually we, we just sort of honed it more it, he was a lot more likable when he was more like an abused dog <laughs> <laughs> and so that we just kind of got closer to that and i think that made it funnier but i don't know yeah it was an interesting process i, I remember that too i just remember you being you were very vulnerable you seem very vulnerable which maybe you're suggesting you don't that's not really a milieu in the in the clerk's world so that's probably it's kind of the audience's way in through a character like that when there's vulnerability. Oh, God help you. <laughs> Elias is the proxy for... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the audience. I think so. Well, I mean, the vulnerability. No, I also I remember, what, did you experience this a lot? Kevin would yell lines to me, just say this, say this, say this. Is that something that you guys experienced throughout the whole process where just on the fly, try this, try this, try this? Uh, the first one, no. Uh, it was strict to the... He was incredibly strict with the script. To almost to a point where, hang on to your hats, fellow actors up here, where line readings were given to even to the vocal texture, where you're like, 
you know, it's like fucking nails on a chalkboard to an actor. I'm like, I'm not a parrot, but okay. Um, now he's more of that, do this, say it like this, say it like that. Or not say it like, but have Dante say this. We did a good bit of that in three. After we got what was scripted, Kevin would come in from outside after having um, herbal medicine uh, <laughs> treatments for his back. Yeah, let's say that. Um, and he would be like, <laughs> why don't we try this? And then this, and then this. And we would do like 20 different kind of ending lines of things. And it, it does work. And then you think when you're done with that day, oh, we did some great stuff. And then you see the edit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> we still went with what he scripted, that fuck. <laughs> nice. How about everybody else? Do you guys uh, feel I, like the expectations are... The thing that I get asked probably the most frequently is, did I, was I, did, did I really dislike smoking or have a disdain for smoking in real life? And it's crazy because anybody who knows anything about my life, which is pretty public on social media. I battled very serious addictions for many years, alcohol and drugs, but I didn't smoke cigarettes of all things. Uh, I did grow up hating it. My mom smoked and I tried to get her to stop forever and ever. And then like a huge hypocrite, I just became addicted to everything else in my own adult life. But um, that was not a stretch to loathe cigarettes. It was pretty bizarre that I ended up getting to play that character. Marilyn? Okay. Um, there are some aspects of Veronica that are like me, and no, it's not that. <laughs> 38. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I become very loyal to whoever is my partner, um, and I will go out of my way to do special things. Um, so that, that's, here, you know, that's... More Let's like hear more about those special things. <laughs> <laughs> I said no, it's not that. <laughs> We're changing the Stranger Things panel to special things panel. <laughs> it's funny because when people say about the, the Dante character and stuff, I'm like, you know, he's a bit of a whiny bitch and stuff like that and, <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, it's so funny because, you know, I'm technically the straight guy, uh, so to speak, when it comes to the comedy of these movies and, you know, where the... I'm in the normal world, but everybody else is in their extreme worlds. But in real life, I'm kind of more of a Randall personality. Mm -hmm. And anybody, and there's quite a few people in this audience who I've worked with and hung out with, they kind of like, oh yeah, <laughs> you're definitely a Randall. While Jeff is more of the quiet, kind of like reserved. I'm more of an Elias. <laughs> <laughs> you too? Yeah. I was wondering why you kept talking about pillow pants. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> That's great. If people want to start lining up for questions, we're happy to take audience questions. You can just line up at either microphone. Oh, there man, you wait, go. Wait. I like that. Eager, oh, shit. The guy in the camouflage. Asking. Here comes the hit. <laughs> All right. Give us, uh, give us your name. What My you... name's Jacob. Hey, hey Jacob. Jacob. And in honor of it being Comic-Con, I was wondering if uh, whoever wants to answer it, if you could be any superhero, what would it be? Any superhero. Let's start on the end, Kevin. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Flash. Ooh, good choice. Fast. I think Trev? I'd go with Professor X. Okay, nice. Batman. <laughs> Excellent delivery. Probably Wonder Woman, since you know I'm so short. She's the Amazon. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'd probably be Underdog. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good choice. That was good. Always saving Polly purebred. How the fuck am I supposed to follow up underdog? <laughs> Shit, you know what? Black, Black Panther, why not? Why not me? <laughs> yeah, good. yeah. Let's, let's see the internet blow that shit up now. <laughs> Once question. again, the white guy trying to steal a role made for people of color. That fucking privileged bastard. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Good question. We'll go over here. What's your name? I'm Parker. Hi, Parker. My Wait. question for the panel is, what is the best prank you've played on each other? Wow. Pranks. Some pranks. Yeah, are you guys, are you guys prank the people? Scenes. Ribbon. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got some pranks up your sleeves? Uh, Je I Jeff has the prank of all pranks. Um, we were shooting Clerks 2, and we were shooting a scene up on the roof, 
and they had a ladder to get up there. Oh, it was, it was uh, Dante and Randall building rebuilding, the store, rebuilding the, the burnt store. down store after we bought it. And they had a saw up there, a, a table saw. Mm-hmm. And, uh, a hand saw. saw. A little, yeah. like, yeah. And I said, Bri, watch this. And I went up there, and I hit the saw for about two minutes, and I was like, ah! And Brian goes, holy shit, he cut his finger off. And get so him. I leaned over the roof, and I'm like, get a medic, get a medic. Now, we had told all the crew... <laughs> The medic themselves, like, this is the prank we're going to pull later on when we're doing the scene. The medic grabs his bag. Kevin's in the store with the monitor. Go ahead. Well, Kevin ran in the store. Uh, at, at this point, I had come down off the ladder, and Kevin ran in the store, and he got paper towels. <laughs> and he came running back out. But the beautiful thing was through the whole thing, and he was scared, scared. But he still had, like, a cigarette dangling out of his mouth. <laughs> like, you weren't too worried about me. You're still smoking. <laughs> So on the, on the set, that was our biggest prank. I, I mean, was, otherwise we didn't really prank prank. Jay is more of a goof on, on set more than a prankster. I once convinced Jeff he popped my cherry. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good prank. That was a prank. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that a prank on? <laughs> the audience. Yes. That was a great question. Thank, Thank you, Parker. You. And great oh, answer. Over here, what do we got? What's your name? Hey, my name is Meg. Hi, Meg. Uh, we saw you guys like a month ago up in Maine, and one thing you, you were saying is that you're not an actor, Jeff. Yeah. Right? So what are you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Anderson. Well, doctor. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I was born in a small town. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not an actor. Uh, this is why we do the movies once every 14 years. It takes me that long to convince me. Like a fucking cicada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean, I don't know what I could say. I'm, I'm not an actor. What yeah, but you, you are a yes, writer. You are. you are a director. You've directed some major people in a great film of your own. I directed Trevor. That's how we found Trevor. That's right. That's how we found Trevor. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I live in the woods, <laughs> which always sounds strange. Um, I, I, I'm kind of out of L.A., and uh, I just chill out, man. <laughs> He's a woodsman. But he also is, and he doesn't say this a lot, but he also is an accomplished artist. He makes mosaics, incredible framed mosaics. He's had an ex- Everybody's picturing me in a room with, like, 80-year-old women. <laughs> I'm like, Rose, will you pass me that? Thank you, Rose. But you've had an exhibit in, out in Las Vegas and stuff, so it's something he takes his time with. It's special. He doesn't announce. He's not a self-promoter at that at all, but I've seen his work, and it's stunning, and it's good stuff. So he has this kind of quiet life that, you know, years from now, you'll be like, oh, my God, he fucking built the fucking mosaic inside of so-and-so kind of thing. So, um, but uh, this is today. By June, you're going to see the phenomenal actor... Jeff Anderson playing Randall in Clerks 3. Yes. And he won't, be able, he won't be able to avoid that title after June. Jeff, did you feel... You'll never see me after Clerks 3. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back in the fucking woods. <laughs> hey, Jeff, did, was it... Jeff, did it feel... Uh, over here, over here. Uh, did it feel... Did it feel... Oh, what God? <laughs> yes. Jeff, you were wonderful in the film. Uh, did you feel... Comfortable being back on set, or did it take a minute to adjust, or did you feel like, you know, riding a horse sort of thing after all yeah, those years? I mean, there's something strange about the store. Like, as soon as we went back to the store, that, that store is, like, frozen in time, and it's, like, stepping back into it. Um, I said this to Brian. I, I said, you know, I probably wouldn't have done two or three uh, if it wasn't for Brian. Uh, it's like getting together with Brian. Uh, as soon as we read and we hang out, it just becomes those two guys. So uh, without Brian, you know, like, like I said, we're, we're going to the store is one thing and going there with Brian, it, it just felt like old times. That's awesome. You're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you, Meg. Over here, what do we got? What's your name? Hi, my name's Robert. Hi, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hi, uh, my question is, uh, in any of the View Askew movies, did you have like a scene or a line that you really liked that ended up getting cut? Great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... It was one scene. It was more like uh, it, was, it happened. It was in, um, I forgot what movie it was, but at the end I was like, fuck you, Kevin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, there's nothing that I was just like, oh my God, I wish we kept it. I mean, we've seen a cut of Clerks 3 recently, and there have been two scenes that have been cut where I was like, ah, I really like those scenes. Those were cool. I get scenes it. Scenes where they, 
yeah, they were that first scene that got cut. And then remember, remember later in the movie that other scene got cut? Both were mine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I told Kevin, I said, yeah, that's going to be on the deleted DVD scene thing, right? And he's like, well, I would assume so. And I'm like, oh, okay. So there were those type of things. But nothing I was just like, oh, you fucking ruined the movie. To the one scene I totally agree with cutting was in the original Clerks when Dante gets shot. <laughs> Otherwise, I, always, I don't sit here. <laughs> I always told Kevin Randall should have shot him. <laughs> I'm kind of why. I'm kind of heartbroken over a cut from Clerks Three. You guys know what it is, but I I don't know if I should say it because it's a it's not really a spoiler, but I probably shouldn't say it. Say it. What, there's not a cut for. What? I'm, I'm kind of. You have a million dollars to blow on that fucking non-disclosure agreement. I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm heartbroken over Sergio. Sergio, yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Just say that Sergio. One there's a cut of the scene that, uh, if you remember from uh, Reboot, they called Dante Sergio. You remember that scene? All right, obviously big Reboot fucking fans. <laughs> anyway, there's a, there's a callback to that Reboot kind of thing. That's it, though. Everything else that I... I, I agree with you. Nice. nice. Who was next? There we go. Hello, Thank you, Robert. Uh, hey, guys. CJ, good to see you. Hey, CJ! Hey, I'm CJ. Um, <laughs> So, we Mr. Schiaffo, <laughs> on a recent uh, podcast, you came out saying on Clerks 3, you took something from the set, a, a pickle and a pouch. Um, I so was, that was you. <laughs> it was I. I was wondering. The pickle and a pouch thief. That right. wasn't a pickle. Are you the lawyer representing Quick Stop for the <laughs> yeah, yes, <that's laughs> lawsuit for stealing a $2 pickle and the pickle in the pouch? <laughs> that's why I've been stalking you for the last nine ah, months. Yes, yes. Finally. <laughs> that is funny, actually, on Clerks 3. If you ate something in the store, you had to write it down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had like 10 packs of gum. I had to pay for it at the end of it. <laughs> did, uh, did any of y'all have anything on from Clerks 3 that you were able to take or hold on to that you really liked? Do I really want to have to testify at my trial later on? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we uh, were one of, our, one of the greatest crew members, and we actually have a, quite a few of the crew members who came up on, on a trip specifically. Yes. We got uh, we got some of our we got our some of our hair and makeup people up here who did phenomenal work to make this fucking pus of a fucking face uh, pleasant to people to look at. So I uh, they should definitely get a nomination for special effects when it comes out. Um, they are here, but but one of the great guys. There was a literally this is his name. I'm not lying to you. Be I'm pandering you because we're at a comic con. Our prop master was named Thor. That is his name. And Thor, at the end, he's like, hey, man, do you want anything, you know, any props from the set that you would have loved? And, uh, and so I named Bradle off a few things like, yo, you can't have that, but we could do this and we could do that and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right. So I have a few things uh, that I have in my collection now. I have things from every movie. Uh, this jersey uh, is actually from, they did two for each of us. There's a hockey scene on the roof again. And this is the quick stop jerseys that will be coming out later next year for sale for, for every all. Nice. Uh, but, you know, uh, as me and Jeff and a few of us are executive producers on the film, I'm like, I want a jersey. And they were like, well, you can't have the one you wore in that scene, but we can do this. I'm like, all right, done and done. So uh, those are the type of things I loved grabbing off the set. Because I used my jacket in the original, which I use again in this one. Nice. Um, but I did have another piece of wardrobe. And I did ask, which is, I hope it's on hold. Um, cause another jacket that I use, I'm like, it, it's not maybe as iconic as the original, but I really liked it. Uh, so I did ask to hopefully maybe be able to buy it down the road. So that's what I'm hoping. But th I really didn't have very much props to ha to get, kind of get back because I brought back a necklace that I wore, earrings, uh, one of four rings that I had left. So I kind of brought my own. <laughs> well, Scott, you were able to actually take, they gave you some of the Chulis gum, right? Those two packs of gum I threw out were stolen. Oh, <laughs> oh I see. So for inspection reasons, you, right. you, you got rid of the evidence, and y'all are going to be subpoenaed in a couple of months. All CJ right. is referring to the first, on the first set, the set of the first clerks, I had never seen a pickle in a pouch. And it, it, it I was like flabbergasted. By the way, don't Google it. pickle in a pouch, people. 
It's not Actually, what you think it is. Actually, pickletapouch.com is now my website. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had never seen it. I had Jay never Muse seen a pickle in a pouch. <laughs> and it, I just thought it was the craziest, funniest thing, and I grabbed it, and I do still have it. It's insane. It's still in the pouch because it's in vinegar, so it's... 28 years kinda old. Kind of okay. Yep, I still have it. Any, uh, any minor, uh, minor thefts, Trevor, from any of the Clerks 2 or Clerks 3 set that you kept? Or, or, were, major, or major thefts. It doesn't right. have to be just minor. Uh, Wait, what? Hey, man. Sorry, what's hey the man. question? Did I keep I'm looking out for my boy. I'm not getting him to squeal on something. Shut the fuck up, boy. <laughs> the, yeah. only thing, the only thing I remember stealing was your heart. Aww. God, you're so fucking good. Nailed it. <laughs> Kevin, did you walk away with anything from two? Besides, obviously, the people pestering you about Lord of the Rings. Just my uh, dignity. There you go. <laughs> no, I think we took that from you. On that yeah, 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 you're wrong about that, actually. Was. I'm sorry. No, I, it was a, that was a, a quick day. I remember eating at that. Where were we shooting? It was down in San Pedro. It was an actual fast uh, food Buena restaurant. Vista. Buena Vista, right near uh, Knott's Berry Farms. Oh, right. But yeah. it was an actual... Was it, it, was a, it was a Burger King that was defunct, that we took over, that was ready for flattening. And once we wrapped, two weeks later, they literally flattened the shit out of that building. Flattened it. But I remember eating something there. Like, they had actual uh, practical food That's that we ate. We had catering, sir. We're not that fucking poor. <laughs> Listen, no. The no, day the scene. Oh, I ordered food in the scene. I don't, was I even in the movie? Honestly, I don't. <laughs> Stop it. Who Although, funny thing about catering, uh, and Jeff will back this up, the day that uh, Ben Affleck showed up, I don't know if you know who Ben Affleck is, um, <laughs> I think he played a Batman once. Anyway, when Ben Affleck came in for that whole making out with Kevin's real wife, and he's like, that's unhygienic kind of scene, he just strolled up. He was like the first thing to be shot. He strolled up in a Bentley, literally with still temporary plates from the dealership, and apparently it was given to him. Like, that fucker needs more things given to him. Um, and so he shot a scene. It was like the first thing we shot. We did that scene, and he left. And then later on, we shot some more stuff, and then lunch came. And then lunch that day wasn't the regular catering truck and stuff that we had. It was a sushi truck. And like this huge, giant, like not the little mini galleons when you have like, oh, it's your birthday at the Japanese restaurant that four people share the little sushi in a boat thing. This thing was like a fucking Viking trawler of fucking sushi. And I was like, Who's, what's with the sushi? He was like, well, Ben had said that he liked sushi. I'm like, he's already gone home. <laughs> Thank God, because we all had sushi that day. Last time I checked, Affleck wasn't a clerk. Right. Because <laughs> literally it was like, you know, here's your fucking egg mu 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 muffin for our catering. But yeah, that was the one thing catering-wise. We were like, what's this all about? And we're like, oh, it's a, this is Affleck catering. I get it. <laughs> but thank you for the question about yeah, what we you. stole. CJ. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. All right. Nice. Let's head over here. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Huge fan of the original movie. Uh, one question is, whatever happened to Olaf, the Russian metalhead? He's yeah. never showed up in anything else. The actor and it wasn't in any other VSQ movies. I think Kevin talked about this. Yeah. Um, at a certain screening, um, <laughs> Kevin, because somebody asked about Olaf. And let's see if I can remember, because I'm bad at retelling. But he lives in London. And... I don't know what, he, I think somebody had mentioned also on, on social media that he maybe went to film school after getting money for having his face on t-shirts um, that he kind of went back to Miramax and said, it's like, you never got my okay on that. Um, so Kevin has since, I think, gotten over that because <laughs> he wasn't too happy about it. Right. Because in, in Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, Jay is wearing the Berserker yeah. shirt mm -hmm. that Kevin sells at a store. And he was like, yo, you had the rights for my likeness for that movie. You don't have the rights of my likeness to be selling on T-shirts. I got my, my, I need my money fucking movie check. Which was funny because isn't that the plot of Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, the irony of it all. Uh, so the cat got fucking more money than all fucking four of us on stage from the original movie got paid to begin with. Um, and and then, then, then he was like blacklisted. And I guess I didn't know about the London part. That's, that's yeah. interesting. Uh, and then they finally settled. And so now Kevin does have the rights. Thus, some of you actually are wearing the Berserker shirt in here uh, and stuff like that. But literally, that cat is the highest paid actor from the original Clerks cast. <laughs> I think like maybe uh, tenfold. 
all right, you don't have to throw all our fucking laundry out there. For fuck's and, and, sake, girl. Because I, I remember it's like there was, I think there was a number that you gave me. Cut bait. Cut. End the story. <laughs> Trying to have some dignity up here. But yeah, uh, that's what happened to the Olaf story. Uh, I know I, I, someone said he tried reaching out to Kevin to be part of three, and there we are. You'll see. Thank you. No, thank you. Good question. Thanks, bud. It's probably, right, Ol- it's probably Olaf's cousin. Like, just curious. <laughs> Is there another future lawsuit in mind? S- sadly, this, this will be our last question. We are, we are just about out of time. Oh, so. what? I feel honored here that I'm the last person to ask you a question. Hi, yes. everyone. I am the Vern, and I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming out here. Uh, it's been, it must be amazing that movie that you shot in 94 will become like a cultural phenomenon and it's amazing. I thank you all for being here. My main question here is for Brian here, sir. Uh, I want to ask you about what was it like to work with uh, Rosario Dawson in Clerks 2? Did you have to audition with her? All right. Um, audition? Or you did, yeah, how you, it must no. be like surreal to like work with someone like her right. for this feature. I just want to get your... Right. Well, first of all, let me just take a moment to think about Rosario Dawson. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> And then let me process the fact that, that I've made uh, that I've that I've made out in film with now a Jedi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh. No, um, she was brilliant. Jeff will testify to this that even our first read through with her on Clerks Two, she totally got the spirit of what Kevin's dialogue was and everything. And you know, as us guys, when we were hearing that Rosario said yes and. Uh, coming through this, um, after the read, I remember Kevin asking her afterwards, like, what, honestly, you know, things are cool, but what made you say yes? And in true nature of how absolutely fucking epically awesome Rosario Dawson is, she says, honestly, I wanted to see how you're going to pull off this donkey show. (laughs) (laughs) So she was always awesome. There were times where she... Jay was fucking pranking her. Like one of the, we talked about pranks earlier. One of the times, so the uh, Days in was adjacent to the movie's location in Buena Vista. So instead of having trailers on the movie set, we all had rooms at this Days in. They just bought the Days in out of rooms because it was fucking near Knott's Berry Farms and it was a part of an area where it was like, oh, obviously they're renting rooms by the quarter of an hour. Um, Affleck stayed in the Four Seasons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where sushi was served on a woman. No, anyway. That's Don't not call true. me a woman. That's not true. <laughs> so um, that was our room. So Jay got the room that was the far end of this. A lot of hotels in, or motels, especially in California, you walk out of your room to an outside. Like literally your car's right there. If you're on the second floor, your railing is right there. And Jay had the one on the path that was the far end. And so Jay, he does this on every movie he does. He goes to the Target or Walmart or whatever, and he has to buy like a fucking 50-inch TV for the room because the 23 or 32-inch is not big enough. And he wants to buy a stereo system. So he tricks out his room for any movie set and so that he can do whatever he wants to, play video games, whatever. So he would be like, yo, yo, Rosario, come over here. And she's like, what? Well, while we're waiting for setups or whatever, he's like, I want you to ask something. And she'd walk down to the room. She'd walk in the room, and on the TV Frozen is the scene with her and Colin Farrell from Alexander. (laughs) By that reaction, I know you know that scene. Anyway, he would then hit play, and the scene would go on. I was like, let me ask you about Colin. And she'd be like, Jay, come on, man. He caught her three times with that stupid fucking prank. (laughs) Rosario started Me Too. Yeah, ri- <laughs> She should have, to be honest with you. Like, Jay Muse. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but I mean, it was that type of fun. She was just really, really fun to be around. And gr- I mean, Trevor will testify to this as well, how just, just genuinely epic. Like, she, she could talk shit with the best of them. She could talk comics with the best of them. She's an uber nerd, but in the most intellectual le- le- way. She's politically on the right side of history on many topics. She's also just stunningly beautiful. And she gets cast in the most epic situations. Like, she told me when we were on Clerks, she's like, I'm trying to get on a Star Trek project. I'm like, bitch, you a fucking Jedi. Why would you want to be on that thing? <laughs> First of all, I didn't say bitch. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> In my head, I'm saying that because in my real life, I was going, oh, okay. <laughs> I did so, I'm like, but you're a Jedi Knight. Why would you want to cross that, that argument? She goes, I'm, 
I just I want to be on that Enterprise or something yeah. and stuff. So she's a big she's a big Star Trek fan. So she said, I want to see how the Enterprise pulls off the donkey show. <laughs> yes, oh yeah. <laughs> She goes up on the holodeck, Picard's like, engage. <laughs> All right, there you go, sir. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Hey, I, hey uh, hang on, hang on, Chuck, Brad. I, I'm sorry to interrupt the panel, but we, we have another special guest coming oh, out no. right now. Ladies Trouble. and gentlemen, let's hear from Movie. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's everybody's favorite. Movies, movies. <laughs> Wow! Hey, everybody! Nice. Hey, nice. hey, by the way, I've also been asked to plug. Hey, there's a Clerks 2 group photo that's still available. There are slots available for the photo. Uh, it's at 5 o'clock. Go to the photo ops area. Uh, there's also a Clerks group, and then there's a uh, uh, Dante and Randall duo. So please, if you haven't gotten them now, you get the print and everything. It's a nice setup. But if you want all of us that you see on stage, that's a five o'clock photo shoot, and there's still openings. Please get in there now. We're not going to make you wait like Jay Muse, and we're not going to be fucking divas like Kevin when it comes to the camera. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but you will get in and out, and uh, who knows? Maybe movie will show up. Nice. It's great. Thank you, Thank you all. You everybody. Thank you, Kevin, Trevor, Scott, Marilyn, Jeff, and Brian. Thank you all for being here. We are Chuck and Brad. Deuces. Thanks. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you!